back to the channel fragrance journey hopefully everybody's having a blessed day hopefully everybody's safe things are starting to reopen and get back to normal i guess if you call it normal but definitely be safe wash your hands you know take precautions don't let these people trick you out and make you get sick but today we're going to be talking about some of my favorite oud fragrances in my collection some of these i have reviewed some of them i have not done a full review on i tried to leave out some of the fragrances that i have spoken about a lot in the past like leather oud uh christian dior a musical oud by nishane and a couple other ones i tried to go in a little bit of different direction and not all of these are going to be barnyard animalic first we're going to talk about is one that is barnyard and animalic but it is my favorite oud fragrance i do not have a full bottle of this i'm kicking myself because i could have got a full bottle but i was being cheap at the time so i kind of hate that i didn't buy that bottle it was for like a steal it was a little bit over half price the fragrance i'm talking about is oud and for i've only got 15 mil i got three uh samples like this and it's five mil i got three five mils of oud and for but from the house of Parfums du Cita. And man, that's, that's Rose, that's Civet, that's, that's gotta be Castorium. Beautiful, beautiful skank, barnyard, animalic oud. Is, that is a masterpiece to me. Not gonna fit most people's uh, scent profile if you basically, if you're just getting into fragrances. And some people are really not into oud, so definitely not gonna fit that. But some of these other ones are definitely fit people that are really not into the barnyard animalic ouds. The next one that we're gonna talk about in this one is just a beautiful fragrance. I think this one will lean towards people that like just a softer oud, one that blends well with the fragrance, doesn't make you stand out too much. Uh, but this is a stunner of a fragrance, to be honest. It's from the house of Rosendo Mateo. This is number four. And this is saffron, oud, and vanilla. You got a beautiful, sweet, Beautiful, beautiful, sweet vanilla. You've got some saffron, spice things up a little bit. The oud blends in well and gives it that woody, woody base and background. This one is really nice, got good performance. Nobody's really talking about this one, so I promise you, if you wear this, you're probably not gonna smell like anybody around you. The next one up does lean more on the animalic side, and this is one that I was put on to by my brother Christian. And this is Don Oud Al Shams, and this is from the house of Ajmal. You can probably get this bottle for like a hundred bucks, but this is pure, this is pure Oud. This is straight up pure. And I think this is, I think this may be Indian Oud, to be honest, cause it is, this is, woo, it's very strong. It's just pure Indian Oud. Don't look for any changes. When you spray that on, most people in the Western Word or not used to smelling oud like that. It's definitely very potent, very powerful, and definitely will get you attention if that's what you're looking for. I don't know about compliments because most people are not gonna enjoy that, but I think it is a masterpiece of a fragrance. The next one up we're gonna be talking about is from the house of Bordnikoff, and this one is Mysterious Oud. And I'm not sure I've done a full review on this one. This one features Vietnamese Oud, Indian Oud, Thai Oud. This one to me is kind of chocolatey. Um, it's got tonka bean, nutmeg. It's got some sweet aspects to it, myrrh. Uh, I don't really get a animalic side to this one, to be honest. Let me spray this one on. It's been a while since I put it on. But yeah, it starts off a little bit on the uh, barnyard Oud side, but that comes down really quickly. It starts to sweeten up just has like a chocolatey woody ooh vibe to it and it's, it's really nice fragrance to be honest also got some sandalwood in it definitely built around woods really really nice fragrance the next one we're going to talk about is from the house of zerjoff and i've got a couple of fragrances from this line I, I tried to keep it to basically one fragrance per house and this is from the house of zerjoff and this is zanzibar and i think this used to be called najaf if i'm right and this one is Laotian Oud, Osmanthus, Tobacco, Sandalwood, Patchouli, Cedar, Green Oats, Tonka, Musk, and Vanilla. This one has a really, really beautiful fecal Oud on the top that really doesn't last that long, the fecalness of this fragrance. You start to get some green notes 
And then you also got a beautiful vanilla and sandalwood dry down that, you know, with some tobacco that is amazing to me. The only problem I have with that fragrance is the performance on it is not the greatest. I wish it would last on my skin a lot longer, but it does not last on my skin. Too, you know, you're not gonna get 12 hours, 10 hours, anything like that. I wish it would stay fecal a little bit longer, but you know, I think it's a really nice fragrance. And you know, that's one that's been out for a while, so mo you know, a lot of people have dis discussed that fragrance. The next one up is from the house of Paris Monte Carlo. And this one is Oud Imperial, and I think I did a re uh, review on this one. This is a beautiful, almost fecal barnyard Oud. Doesn't really go that direction to me, but this is a really beautiful, beautiful Oud fragrance. Very woody. You got some spices. Oh man, it's kind of dry. Wow. That just smells like freshly cut wood and Oud. Got a hinge of a floral aspect to it also. I really enjoy that one a lot. To me, it's a little bit on the pricier side. It is a perfume perfume extract, if I'm correct. Um, the regular EDP, I think, is a little bit cheaper than that one. But um, it's a really nice fragrance, to be honest. Really, really nice. The next one up is one that I know I have not done a review on. And this one is, to me, I would say one of my favorite fragrances in my collection, to be honest. Um, and this is from the, and I hope I say this name right. Y'all know I always butcher names. But this one is from the house of Bordnikov. And this one is U Sinaraha. And I hope I said that right. Sorry if I, if I said that wrong. But this is one of the most beautiful floral Ooh, fragrances that I have smelled. This no, I'm not bullshitting nobody. This is an amazing, amazing, amazing composition. This has a note of fringe upon fringe of fringe of is it fringe upon fringe upon Man, that mixed in. It's got fringe upon it's got magnolia, it's got some bergamot, it's got some jasmine sambac, it's got some uh oud, it's got labdanum, it's got grapefruit, it's got cedar and it has cardamom. Man, this starts off with this creamy type citrus vibe mixed in with like creamy florals. That fringe of panty note is like elite. One of the most elite floral fragrances that I've smelled. It's got a beautiful soft oud in the background that just, woo! And I think this is, I think this may be Thai oud, I think. If I'm correct, I think this is Tao. I think this is Tao. But man, it's really, really beautiful. That fragrance right there is one. I don't like to spray that one a lot because it is so, so, so beautiful. And so well blended, so well put together. The notes are elite in that fragrance. Bordnikov does a masterpiece with that uh, tuberose, frangi uh, frangipani. Ooh, they just do a masterful, masterful, masterful job. The next one up we're gonna talk about, and this, this is, like I said, I did I think I did a review on this one. This would be my signature scent if I was rich. I'm not rich, so it can't be my signature scent, but this one is just like over the top. Man, this is a masterpiece. This is next level perfumery in my eyes. It's just a masterpiece to me. The fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of Insar Oud, and this is, E01 number one. My God, this features notes of rosewood, lavender, sandwood, nutmeg, castorium. It's got three different type, type of roses, Turkish, Edward, uh, Himalayan. It's got jasmine, it's got civet, it's got wild age, um, oud, it's got ambergris, it's got tobacco. And this is built on a uh, ambergris tincture. Um, so it, this is just, this is crazy, man. This is leathery, this is, Oody, this is tobacco, this is animalic, this is floral. This is like taking a flight around the world. You get a little bit of everything. And that, to me, is maybe my favorite fragrance in my collection, to be honest. I'm not sure. Leather Ooze may maybe my favorite fragrance. But that's definitely up there in my top five. I need to do a video on my top five 
fragrances of all time. But this is just a quick video talking about some of the oud fragrances in my collection that I really, really, really enjoy. I recently did like a community post where I asked what y'all like to see from the channel. So I'm gonna try to go through that and see if I can get some of those videos out um, for you all. Also, again, I hope, hope everyone is safe. Work's been crazy for me. I haven't been able to be as productive and getting videos out. And sometimes I just don't have the motivation to do videos all the time. Um, I feel like I have to be motivated sometimes to come up and do videos because if I don't have the motivation, I just, I won't put any effort into the video. So definitely shout out to all the subs. I appreciate y'all, I love y'all, hope y'all safe. Should have more reviews coming out soon, more uh, don't do top fives, but a list of my favorite fragrances in my collection. Hope everybody stays safe. If you woke up today in these times, you are definitely, definitely winning. And I'm out. Peace.